Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky with Blue Cat Studio. Happy Tuesday and welcome to another episode of Technique Tuesday. Tech Tuesday for short, except for I always have tech issues. So, you know, you can just laugh at me about that. So, okay, today we're going to be working on a triadic color scheme. So let's do a quick explanation on the color wheel and I'll also show you my palette just so it really makes sense. We're going to do colors that are basically in a triangle on the color wheel. So I could go, you know, red, yellow, blue, but I don't know, that's boring. So instead I've decided to take it and shift it just a little bit, just like cock it off, just boop, one to the, just like a quarter turn or a tiny itty bit of a turn to the right. So instead I'm gonna do this outer edge of like this kind of tangerine color, the outer edge of this kind of, so I'm going with the, the tertiary. So see it's the YYR the RRB and the BBY. And we just sort of know that those are the tertiary because they've got the three letters. So I'll take the outer sort of left edge of that one, the left edge of that one, which is quinacridone magenta, and the left edge of that one, or this edge right here, which is gonna be the mermaid tail. Okay, enough talk. We're gonna go do this thing. So it's always nice to have that reference. And so the colors I'm using are mermaid tail, teal. This is tangerine by folk art and it's a very yellowy, orangey, whatever. And then of course the quinacridone. For darkening, I've chosen to use the uh, raw umber, any raw umber or burnt umber, whatever kind of umber you can get your hands on. It's almost like just sort of a shaded down version of this. I feel like it's going to give me better results than using black. Black tends to Black tends to muddy everything. And then of course we've got white. All right, enough talk. Now you gotta have a sense of what we're doing. So sticking to the cherry theme, let's go ahead and first block in a cherry. So I'm gonna just go straight into that quinacridum and I'm gonna make you believe that that magenta is red. Right now, actually, it looks kind of red. It's really quite magenta. And of course, one of my most favorite colors so yeah, today I spent my day searching for, well, not my day. I spent about 20 minutes searching for a hot pink Santa hat. Did I win? Yep, but that's okay. Hey, Holly, how's it going? I'm so happy to see you, my dear. Okie dokie. So we've got the basic magenta plopped in there. Um, we'll go ahead and add a little bit of lightness to it. And I'm just going to actually drag the, drag the white right in to just kind of lighten certain parts. And if you're wondering why I'm doing cherries, there's a couple of reasons. One, they're fairly easy to execute because they're small. They're a beautiful red, which of course was a nice way to do a red and green without it seeming Christmassy. And, 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 and since we are doing this during the holiday time, um, did you know? that down under our December is the equivalent of their June. And you know, it's a season then it's cherries. And in fact, I believe cherries are a fairly traditional thing to snack on at Christmas time on the other side of the equator. So there you have it. It's kind of like the, it's kind of winning on all fronts. Oh no, where's my offloading book? book. Okay, here's one. I was like, I got my brush and I totally forgot. All right, so I'm gonna offload my brush a little bit. Now look at that gorgeous. It's almost like a hot pink, like right there. That's my happy place color. That's all I gotta say. It's my happy place color. Okay, whoops. And I'm just gonna rinse my brush. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna rinse my brush, but I'm gonna grab some of this tangerine, kind of bring it over here, and maybe a little bit of white just to kind of lighten it a little bit. And I'm gonna bring some of that yellow into into this guy. I'm not sure how well that's going to work. I'm trying to keep it stark. I'm trying not to have too much color mixing going on. I want you to really feel those three colors in play. Okay. And now from here, I'm going to give it kind of a nice horizon line. We'll go with a sort of the yellowy tone. I'm going to add some white to it. A little bit more white. I didn't rinse my brush. I almost did, then I changed my mind. So we'll decide that we've kind of got a horizon line here. And you know what? My, my superpower is not horizon lines. In fact, whenever I do a horizon line, I tend to get it crooked. 
just in case you're sitting there thinking, man, how does she always, if you're thinking positive thoughts about me, just know that horizon lines are, are not my superpower. I think I pretty much have to use a ruler if I'm going to get them straight. It's kind of ridiculous. Okay. So continuing to just kind of lighten above there. I'm just adding some white. So this is the top. I just turned it upside down for the sake of convenience for a minute here. I've got a little bit of a blend going on because I didn't brush, I didn't rinse my brush in, but I'm good with that. And so if I just want to kind of shift the tone again, we're trying to hold on to that tangerine color. And so when you're doing a project like this and you're doing three colors, you know, if all three of them are equal, then it starts to get a little bit stale. So it really helps to um, kind of allow one or two of the colors to be a little bit more dominant. Okay. So that's the top. That makes more sense, right? Because we've got the shading and whatnot going on. So down below, I'm so tempted, like my natural instinct is to just like take these two colors and mix them and create an orange, but then that pushes us back into the analogous color scheme, right? Yeah. But yeah. So I'm, I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. So I think we will grab, try to decide here. We'll go with some teal. Yeah. Rinsing my brush, rinsing my brush. And all right. So full confession, y'all, I have been super ADHD today. I got this crazy idea while I was sitting at work, um, trying to read some really boring information. And my brain was like, pew, 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 pew. So I might go live a little bit later today to talk about it. I don't want to sort of dilute this particular lesson. Um, Okay, so I think I said I was going to do the teal. I think that's what I said. If not, well, we're doing it. So I'm taking it, but I'm lightening it. So when you're working in a color scheme, uh, lightening it and darkening it is not cheating. It is perfectly allowable. And this is a very, very simple um, version of a triadic color scheme. I mean, you can get way more complex by, by working it into all the shadows and having these grand designs but you know we're trying to mostly keep these little lessons down to like you know 20 minutes or so so you can kind of get the very basic sense of it and then you can begin to evolve your your color craft from there okay so now we've got like a pretty good just sort of base base tone not perfectly even i never insist on that however i think i'm gonna darken kind of around the edges a little bit just to kind of frame it give my my wood piece a little bit of a little bit of gravity maybe a smidge more along the horizon line maybe that's a good idea maybe it's not I don't want to say I'm winging it I'm really not but uh, my original mock-up which I kind of just sketched out electronically really really quickly or you know like with colored pencils um, I had a sort of a different thing in mind but then I when I went back and looked at it again Later, I decided it wasn't quite right. So we're making a few tweaks to the concept. Okay, so you can really see that we've got the triad working here. We have the tangerine, the magenta, and the teal. Very, very obvious. And so from here now, we can begin to work in these, sort of combine these colors, not combine them, but overlay them in somewhat unexpected man ways. So um, we need to add a shadow. And just like on all of these, we have to add highlights, and then we need to add some stem. Now I could just go with straight brown. I'm gonna start with that teal. I'm just using a, a medium, large-ish round brush. And so again, we always know that there's kind of like a little divot right there and we'll just kind of bring it up like so. Grabbing a little bit more. Coming to here. And of course, once we get to this point, you know, easy button, just a couple of lines to, to seal it off. I love that kind of teal color for the stem. However, you can't just have that teal color. Your brain goes, what? So we're going to have to add some shadow to it to make it a little bit more believable. So if you're watching, don't forget to say hi. Let me know you're out there. Um, it's always fun to interact with you guys. I absolutely love chatting. If you have questions, post them um, and I will absolutely answer. Okay, so I want to add some shadow in there and okay, here's where I am going to maybe cheat a little bit. I'm going to take some quinacridone and mix it, mix it into that teal. 
to kind of drop its tone a bit. I want it to feel still like quinacridone, mostly. It's getting a little bit of purple there. But I hope it also just kind of, what are you doing, crazy cats? You're fighting. I don't want it to feel too much like purple. But I also just don't want to use brown. Call me, I don't want, no, don't call me lazy. All right, so we're going to kind of add some of that shadow kind of right around the neck of the cherry and the neck of the cherry here. Kind of, don't forget to respect the, um, the stem. And we'll get a little bit of that kind of deeper tone kind of right underneath. Again, this is fairly simplified. I really don't have a reference. All of these have just kind of been from memory and me being like, yeah, I think this is how those things work. Um, I guess we need to decide where our light source is too, don't we? So I've kind of got the orange brights over here. I'm thinking maybe our light source will be this way. So we're going to have more shadow kind of to the left over here. So I'm just going to plop a little bit more of that shadow in and we'll add some kind of right in through here next to the two. That way um, you can kind of see there's a shadow between, between them where one overlaps the other a little bit. Okay, it's not super focused on crisp lines or anything else. I'll grab a little bit more of that magenta -y color. It's like a purpley magenta. And we'll bring, crouch down here, kind of bring that purpley color right up underneath that teal. Bring it up right underneath the teal. Oh, somebody wants to go outside. No kitty. Okay. So that's added a little bit of gravity. Now still, this is this is kind of flat. Is there a reason for the teal mix instead of the orange? You mean for underneath here, Holly? Um, I chose I chose the teal mix down down in this zone. Um, because I really want to make sure that we're truly using all three colors um, because this is supposed to be triadic. Um, and if I went with orange here and just had a few tiny teal highlights, those might almost not be visible and your brain would kind of more register it as analogous, which is because the orange and the purple, I mean, the magenta and the tangerine are pretty close. You know, you could kind of feel them, feel them in like this zone here. And so I wanted, I wanted so the two dominant colors or majority, I should call them majority because I feel like the, the magenta, oh, for the shadows. Oh, well, so I used the teal and the magenta for the shadows because I want the shadow to appear magenta. And if I add the orange to it, it's going to, um, it's going to brighten it because it's a very light color. So, um, this is actually some highlight not shadow. And that was just me plopping some orange in there. And we're going to, we're going to continue to kind of refine this. So I'm going to rinse the brush a bit just to get, clear some of that teal out of here. And now we're going to find some in-betweens. So uh, this might be cheating a little bit, but I'm going to take some of that quinacridone over here, grab some of my tangerine, kind of mix them together, create kind of a nice orangey kind of bright color going to add just a little bit more quinacridone to it. So it's still, yeah, see, I tend, so honestly, my natural, my natural painting style is to do, pick an analogous scheme and then two kind of accents. So it's almost like creating an X with its legs filled in or a Y, like a Y with fat, with a fat legs. I don't know. I'll, I'll, so my favorite scheme is often I'll pick like you know, something here, something here, and then pick a zone like that. And we'll try to purposely paint that way at some point. Okay, so I'm going to come in here with some of that ready mix that I just created. And it's crazy, but magenta and that tangerine makes this beautiful, beautiful true red. Whoops. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? A radiation symbol. Yes. Yes. Except for like, I'm using like thin slivers of the tangerine and the teal and then the wider swath of the ready orange zone. So similar kind of, well, I'm just going to like tie my tongue in tangles on this one. So we'll, we'll, we'll pause while I'm ahead here. Okay. 
But can you see how that, that red, so we have the magenta, we have the lightened magenta, we've got the orange popped here, and the red that I mix plus the deeper magenta. And so we've already got a lot of richness going on, and you can kind of feel the, the, the triadic happening. So let's see, I want to do a couple of touch-ups with just the plain magenta. I feel like I've got a couple of messy edges. And sometimes I like to, you know, I have the shadow part and then I like to bring a slightly lighter tone directly under that shadow as if some of the light is kind of reflecting back up while it's also casting shadows. But I've got some rough edges. Okay. So, ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. I'm thinking out loud. Okay. I'm going to rinse. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a baby reflection on this side of the cherry. It's where a little bit of the shadow is kind of, it's kind of reflecting on it. So we're going to do a little line right inside here. It's kind of where it's reflecting some of the surface that it's sitting on right there. But we still have the dark. Can you see that? We also still have to put a shadow in here to figure out what color I'm going to do for that one. Okay, I'm rinsing and drying. Now I want to get some of the highlights going in here. So we'll take some of this white and, and uh, tangerine mix that I have that's nearly dry on my, my palette. Whoops, got a little green in there, no biggie. Okay, get a little twist on my thing. And then I'm going to kind of drag some of that little highlights along this. Little highlights. Boop -doo -doo. Have to be careful. Those highlights are just close enough to the background that we might kind of lose. We might lose some of it. Oops, got a little green in there, so I need to offload. <laughs> You can start to see that um, the stems kind of coming to life. And then we'll add, I'm going to start that color mix over again. Do the bright orange over here. We need a lot more white, so we're going to get more white. So again, really my, my goal today is to is to demonstrate um, how we how we create you know, the same, the same picture, of course, this one I did just one cherry and then later on decided two was better. Um, but how we can create almost the exact same picture or exact same concept um, with four different color schemes. Again, adding little kisses of that light to the, and I'm using a very, very pale tangerine. It's tangerine and white mixed together. It looks kind of like a light yellow. And uh, just kind of putting little squiggly bits along that stem so that it really comes comes out. Adding bits of that. Oh, I picked up teal again. Darn it. Okay, I dragged some teal in there. All right, we're just going to go with it. Little bits of that pale yellow. I could also use white. I feel like it's a little less stark and kind of interesting like this. Bring a little bit more highlighting down along the side here, maybe here. Bring a little bit down, and I'm going to add some an off look. Ooh. To be careful, grab a little bit of the straight tangerine. I'm going to add a little tangerine right in, right in here underneath. It's kind of an undertone. Kind of bring it back because this tangerine directly on the wet paint wasn't really doing much, but Tangerine on the white works pretty well. So we're getting there. I'm trying to think, I feel like we need a little bit more. Sometimes I have to squint at this and decide. Okay, so we definitely need a shadow. So let's get a shadow going. How are we going to do the shadow? I could just grab the brown. I haven't used it yet, um, but that might make a lot of sense. Um, let's see what happens. Brown and some quinacrid on. We'll just kind of mix, see what, what we get. I feel like the brown is just kind of like a nice dark. And even if we don't like it, that's okay. We can always come back and go over it with another color 
think of this as an undertone if, if nothing else. So again, just kind of creating a little shadow. Even, even when um, a cherry has got direct, direct light right over it, or well lit, it always casts, or any object, not just a cherry, a, excuse me, a tiny little shadow just directly under itself. Just kind of getting a little tiny bit of shadow in. And so I have to admit, you know, um, if you are kind of like, hey, how does she know how to put all these things and where to put these things and how to make that actually make sense and work? Um, you know, you can always grab like an apple or a pomegranate or any kind of like fruit or whatever and practice your still lifes. I mean, look at that. As you see this on camera, it's like there's a sh there's a big highlight right here. There's a highlight right here. There's a highlight right here. Um, you see how it's casting a little shadow on my hand right under there. And if I put my fingers together, you can kind of see the little shadow underneath there. Um, and you can see that it's sort of richer reds here and lighter reds here, despite the fact that this is a fairly evenly colored um, thing. And so practicing still lights or practicing like a simple fruit or an apple or a pear. Pears are a little more complicated because they have like blushes of pink and peach. Um, it's an amazing exercise and it will really shift how you think about how you think about these things. So see, now that we've added that, um, that bit of the, the, the umber in there, look how now that little bit of teal there looks like the teal from this is just reflecting up. Isn't that like the craziest thing? I kind of love that. Okay. I'm going to offload some of this. It's a very, it's got a lot of the magenta in it. So I'm going to rinse. So again, I'm trying really, really hard not to combine. If it was up to me, I'd be making purples and all sorts of, you know, greens and whatnot, because this sort of color combo is kind of amazing. So we'll take some of the umber, bring it over here, and then we'll get some of the mermaid tail into it. So this one's got a little bit of the red in it, and we'll bring some of the mermaid tail kind of kind of in a little bit. It's getting a little greeny. So the umber is definitely, definitely more in the yellow family. Just adding a little bit of darkness because, you know, in addition, and this is one of those things that, you know, all the lessons, they work together. Um, contrast is so, so important when creating art. It's not just about getting the right colors. It's also about the play of dark and light. So I'm now just going to grab some of the straight mermaid tail, bring it in here, like so. I'm kind of scrubbing it on. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white, a little bit of that, and see if I can't lighten this. I feel like it got a little bit too dark. So I'm also kind of muddying it down a bit, so I'm playing with the, um, the shading, the shading, because I've muted it out a bit, so it's less um, saturated. Saturation is pretty much when you, or lack of saturation is kind of what happens when you add something like a gray, a gray to a, um, a color. It takes it all down a bit. All right. Stretch this a little. So the other thing, I've got that kind of wet, wet paint there. I can then come back with a little bit of the, the premixed or the mixed brown that we created and soften the shadow because you also notice, or maybe you won't notice, but you if you do it often enough, you'll come to see that you have the deepest shadow directly there, but it's not even the whole way. It tends to get lighter. And so we've just kind of scrubbed it with that like desaturated teal. And now we've got a pretty, a pretty good shadow. So I feel like if I work this guy a whole lot more, it's going to be like overkill. However, I think because on all these other ones, I have got some fun white um, highlights. I'm going to just do that on this one as well. So they kind of jive. So on this one, the shadow, the light is coming from here. This one, the light is coming from here. This one, the light is coming from here. So since the light is coming this way, we'll add a little touch of highlight right there and right there. More than anything, because that's where I decided to put it. And then, of course, there's always a reflection kind of on that hip above. We want a little hip here. And I'm going to add a slight frowny face style curve. 
just so that you kind of get the sense of it being like a, a, a divity thing that goes down, whatever. And then let's see, maybe grab, just finding a few things I want to tweak in here. So I'm kind of going back to my magenta with a smidge of the tangerine mixed in to kind of add a little something at the hip. I don't know. Okay, I'm about to overwork this. Oh, a little bit more white, maybe just a or pink kiss kind of right under here. Just a touch. And notice like my starkest white is here. And then I've kind of used variations, lightened variations of the other colors along here and here to help create the roundness because you know when you have a highlight you know if you're just doing kind of a whimsical style where it's you know very very simple you know you kind of have like a white highlight and then the dark and that's it but when you're trying to do something a little bit more realistic um, there's a lot of nuance that you can work into it and even this is a pretty rough sketch so let me know if you have any more questions I feel like that pretty much covers it but now you can see that we've really worked through um, a whole number of quite cool color schemes Again, we have the, um, okay, I keep forgetting it every single time. Somebody remind me. They're opposite, so complementary, complementary, green and red. So they're directly opposite. So any color on the color wheel that's directly opposite, it's going to be complementary. So we could have done lime and magenta or purple and lime-ish, kind of this, these two zones. That's complementary. But in this one, we did these guys, green and red. For the analogous, we pretty much stuck in that color zone right in, right in here. And that's when you usually pick like three to four to five. For this one, this was the monochromatic. And while it looks like it's got purples and pinks and reds in it, I literally used one red, black, white, and I think I used a bit of gray, which was just of course black and white. Um, and it was a red that was right here along this line, which is the Tuscan red. Very, very simple. Isn't that crazy? And so this is actually white and black added to that red and it took it down to a funny purple. And then of course, finally today, we did the triadic. And when you look at this guy on the, on the color wheel, you can really see that it's kind of here and kind of here and here. Let's see here, yeah, here and here. And then of course we lightened and darkened as, as we needed to. And for darkening, just because black, again, it sometimes has a lot of green or blue or something else in it. It's very difficult and it just, it muds things. We use, we use the raw umber because it tends to be like a very burned, bur it's like as if this caught fire. So that was kind of the reasoning. That's why it's, oh, this is raw umber, excuse me, raw burn. They're all like the good, lovely brown. That's amazing. All right. So we will see you guys next week for more color theory. And I think after that, we're, we're going to be pretty close. We may come back then and do another uh, discussion of value. So if you were to actually look at these and kind of squint at them, like I'm sitting here squinting at you guys, you can see that we have darks, we have lights, we have light, we have dark. Um, and if I were to turn all of these black and white, my hope is that each each picture would still kind of pop off the page. Um, maybe I can find my sketchbook and break out a couple of the value things and, and show you guys more about that. Anyways, um, if you like this or you know someone who might benefit from this, please feel free to like and share. Um, if you don't get notified every time I get live, but you want to make sure you don't miss any of these, just adjust your settings so that, that it will always pop up and notify you when um, Blue Cat Studio goes live. And again, Wendy Clinky here. I love you guys. I hope you had a great holiday and I will see you next time. Bye.